So these are some books that I've been reading for the past two months and here are some of them that I would like to see made into a movie or TV show or cartoon, animation, whatever. Just something I would like to see them be adapted into. Or a video game, yeah, too. The Dragon King Chronicles by Ellen O. So these books, I just started reading them and the first one, and I'm already really into it. Uh, it's about a girl called Kira Kang who is a demon hunter and she has the tiger sp this tiger spirit within her and she's ostracized in her community because of her abilities so she's kind of an outcast and she's in the um the military like she's she's a warrior so she's part of the, the you know the soldiers but she can't really move up the ranks because she's a woman and yes yeah, she because of the demons invasion She's been tasked with protecting her cousins, who are um, who are princes, and she needs to go to the other kingdom to seek help from them. And since I'm not too, too far into it, I can't give a detailed thing, and I also don't want to spoil it for anybody. But I think these will work best, really, as um, it can work as a TV show or a movie because they're both. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah, live action. It could also be animated. Even the um the author herself, Ellen O, she wanted it to she 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 wants for it to be like a manga or something. It's a good book, it's epic fantasy, young adult, set in ancient Korea. Um not well mystical ancient Korea obviously, not straight out of Korea, but it's really really good. Next one is the Bone Street Rumba trilogy by Daniel Jose Older. I'm on the second book, which is Midnight Taxi Tango. The first book is um, Half Resurrection Blues. First book follows Carlos de la Cruz, who works for the New York Council of the Dead. And he, his, he's half dead. And his job is to take care, like take out um, malevolent ghosts within New York. They, uh, one night he kind of meets uh, someone of his kind who he has to kill and he realizes this person has a sister and he kind of falls in lust with the sister's picture and kind of seeks her out because you know being half dead is quite rare and he wants to meet another one and it's just, it's really there's a lot of intrigue a lot of behind the the the, the council's kind of corrupt and be it's, it's a lot of things going on it's very crime filled noir um urban fantasy goodness it's really good it would be great if this was a tv show i'm pretty sh i heard it was optioned by anika noni rose like a few years ago was it last year or the year before that anyways yeah, it was optioned by anika noni rose for like a tv show or a movie and yes i would like to see that so whoever's in charge get it going do it now please Yes, especially since, <sighs> you know, yeah, Nicole Bahari could even play Sasha, who's like the love interest of Carlos. Like, yeah, I think she'd be good at, yeah. Okay, now I really want this show to be made now. Someone get onto it. Shadow Shaper is another one by Daniel Jose Oda, and that one follows, it's another urban fantasy, but this one is, um, is a YA. And it follows Sierra Santiago, who is um, a black Puerto Rican girl living in New York. Uh, was it Brooklyn, I think? I think it was Brooklyn. I could be wrong. But yeah, anyways, um, she found out that she's a shadow shaper, which means she can put her... put um, place spirits into art and bring that art to life. And... Someone's killing the shadow shapers and her and all her friends need to stop it and this is the most recent book I read and actually I listened to it on um, audiobook which is narrated by Anika Noni Rose too so that's cool and it was really good I really liked it it was it was the only bad thing I can say it was too short but since it's having a sequel I don't mind just as long as I get more Sierra and everybody else that'd be cool uh, what else? Yeah, it would work. It, yeah, it could work as 
Yeah, a movie. Yeah, since it's quite short, yeah, it'll work better as a movie than as a show. Shadow Shaper and the Bond Street Rumba trilogy, they take place in the same universe. So characters that you read about, see in Bone Street Rumba, you see them again in Shadow Shaper with, I think it was Baba Eddie and I don't think Kia was there. No, 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 no. It was the rapper that Kia listened to who's friends with Sierra or something. One of them, I can't remember, but yeah. The Vampire Hunters Legend series by L.A. Banks, which follows Damali, who is a spoken word poet, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, she's a spoken word poet, and she finds out she's a vampire huntress. It's been a while since I read these books, so they're not fresh in my mind, but I had to add them to the list of things that I wanted to be adapted. Because even though it's not the best type of literary, like, great in fantasy works, I think it's still good. I think it's all right. And worse things have been adapted, okay? And been improved upon in adaptation. So I think that... I think that the vampires hunt the vampire huntress books could be adapted really well. And plus vampires in media have pretty much run it, ran their course, you know. So if a new show was to come in, it'll offer with something different, you know, it could work. I know. They could put it on like T V one or B T and if done right it could be really good because I don't think B T or T V one have something proper supernaturally on their show. I mean, I think I would know if they did, so... But they don't. Nedia Korofor. Now, I think that three of her YA books, Akata Witch, which is a series, only book one has been out since 2011. Still waiting for that second one, but... Put that aside. Um, second one, the other one, uh, Zara the Windseeker and... The Shadow Speaker. These three books, I would love, love, love to see them be adapted into an animated feature film. Yeah, I think they all three of them will work best as an animated feature film rather than a show. Just because I feel like they could do, they could really go all in with a movie. So, Zara the Windseeker especially, because Zara the Windseeker, okay, the plot is about a girl called Zara who is a wind seeker, who found out she's a wind seeker. She was born with her hair in, in dreadlocks, which is called um, Dada, so she's Omo Dada, as we would call in Yoruba, which means her hair is, um, like, it was it was coarse and like, it's already been locking since birth. And um, in, in this world, she has um, vines growing around her hair too, and this means that she's like magical and stuff and she's kind of again ostracized in her community and people pick, make fun of her because they think she's weird and, or she's an omen or whatever but it just means that she could fly so she learns that she can fly and where Zara lives is within the Uni Kingdom she lives in a small town which borders this forbidden jungle where all these bad stuff happens and no one ever dares goes into there because if you go in there you're all not gonna come out most likely. So her and her friend, they decide to go in there because that's what kids do, disobey. And, you know, she starts practicing her flying abilities there. And stuff happens and they go on a wild, crazy, magical, lovely adventure within this forbidden jungle, which is just lush and green and, oh, just everything about Zara's world just makes me go, oh, this would look so good if it was animated. Like a nice, like, Studio Ghibli anime type madhouse thing. You know, it has to be 2D. It just has to be. Like, 2D with some CG stuff computerized mixed in, but like 2D with just, yes, please. Mm, because, like, Zara's world is like, okay, the world is set on this place called Ginen, which all of Nedia Koropo's books link into. So, from Who Fears Death to the shadow speaker and a cutter witch and some short stories as well they all link into 
Zara's world, which is the the planet, the fictional, whatever you want to call it, yeah, realm called Ginen. So in Ginen, they've married technology with nature, and it's just when you're reading it, you're like, oh god, I want to see that. I want to draw that. I need to get back into drawing so I can draw it. Cause I just reread it, and I'm just it's just inspiring me to draw again. So yeah. That would be really cool. Oh, I'm not imagining it right now. It would be so good. Why isn't there more fan of it? People read this book, man. Seriously. Um, Who Fears Death? Also, I heard that this was getting um, a movie made by one director who... A Kenyan director. Wanuri something. I forgot her last name. But yeah, she made one movie called um, Pumzi, which is really good. Uh, I don't know... I don't know what's happening to that. I don't know if it's still going on or if it's just in a standstill right now. But whatever's happened to it, I'm looking forward to it if they ever get onto it. Now, any one of N.K. Jemisin's books could really be a movie or a TV show or even a game. So let's start with the first one, Inheritance Trilogy. Uh, the first book was The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, which follows um, a young woman called Yena Dar, who learns that she she's been called into the capital city called sky where a lot of well all three of the books take place in she's been called to the capital city um because her grandfather wants to make her a possible heir to all the hundred thousand kingdoms and there's gods and there's political stuff going on and there's backstabbing and a whole bunch of other stuff and enslaved gods and Oh my day, like, is it these books, they're just the shit. And each book is told by somebody different. So the second one is told by, um, God, I'm forget her name, Ori Shof. And she's a blind woman who deals with um, one of the gods as well. Uh, who else was there? The third one, what was the third one? Um, the Kingdom of Gods was... Oh my days, why am I forgetting? CA, oh, I kind of forget him. CA told, um, was a POV of the third book. And they all take place, like, in different times. Like, it, it spans a whole, like, I think 10 years is throughout the book. So you have Yena's arc, which is the first one. And then you have Ori's one, which takes place, I think, a year after. And then CA's is 10 years after The Broken Kingdom. I can't be sure right now, but like that's what I think it is. Um, yeah, a mini series or a TV show would work best for for these books. It's just, oh, it's just good. Especially num number two, I'd have to say is my favorite one because it took me a long time to recover before I could read number three. One Dream Blood. Um, that's a two part book. Yes, just yes. Actually, no, it could work best as a game, just with how the magic system works in um, Dream Blood. And The Broken Earth, which is... <sighs> the Broken Earth is what I read before. Um, what you call it? Shadow Shaper and All My Days. If Shadow Shaper wasn't so much uplifting, yeah, I would still be on the floor crying because of the Broken Earth um, trilogy. Like, the fifth season, that book... I'm not over it still. I'm still not over it. Why? Why? I should be used to this by now, but no. Oh, Cyanite. Why? Oh, gosh. And people said that Dragon Age... No. Mm, no. Mages there don't know how the origins have it yet. This is... Psh. Yeah, so I will make a movie of that too, please. Like, I don't know. Um, get Ava DuVernay. I'm not over this season. Oh my days. But anyways, that's the list. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.